Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. I am here with Chris. We are going to replace a blower motor and blower motor resistor in this 1990 240 wagon. Hopefully somebody will find that dog some peanut butter. When replacing the fan and the resistor, there's kind of, I guess, three-step process. First thing you want to do is take off the upper dash pad assembly. Next, you want to take apart the lower and center console. Then you want to remove the ductwork assembly and then you'll have access to the motor and the resistor. If you're going to replace this motor, you may want to spring for a resistor and go ahead and replace it as well. Do any of this stuff, you always want to test your blower motor. So, even though it's brand new, you want to make sure it works. We got the positive hooked up. He's going to touch the negative on that negative thing. And that motor might jump out of my hand. Hopefully not. Don't clip it. Just tap it on the. Just tap it. I was, it I was the, hoping to show it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. The motor sounds nice and cool. You could clip it on there. Since it ain't got the fan on there. It makes a little bit of noise. There it is. Brilliant. The VEO motor. All right. So we're good to install it. We're going to be using instructions that we found on Turbo Bricks. I will put a link in the comment section to that tutorial. Disconnect your negative battery terminal, uh, insulate it away so that you don't uh, make remake its own contact. Next, we're going to remove the lower dash panel, pop these out on both sides. We're using a bone tool here. And then get that T30 down there on both sides, there and there. These are loose. You tilt the panel down about an inch and then pull it out. It's got a couple of posts that hold in the bottom and those two screws hold it on top. Lower panel off. Turn this a quarter of a turn. These three things. Pull them out. Pull this over this rubber gasket or just pull the rubber gasket over the vent. Pull this down and out of the way. Next, you want to pull this dash trim loose carefully. You can use a bone tool from underneath it. Work it out. See that bone tool. Be careful. If you don't break it, it's old. Old plastic. Next, you want to take these panels out here. Be careful you don't break them. The knob off there, the knob off there, and take the four screws off around the instrument cluster. Two on this side, two on the other side. That uh, panel will pop out with a uh, bone tool after you get the two knobs off. Throughout the driver's side had a little bracket that slid off first. Then you reach back there and you unplug the things to the cluster to get the cluster all the way out and out of the way. Whenever possible, wherever you pull screws out, when you get the part out of the way, set the screws back in the holes so you don't have to be looking for screws or marking every screw you remove. Only had five things unplugged the cluster. Now we're gonna pull the radio out and get the duct system loose. Pull the screw out the driver's side of this duct assembly you work it out that way and then it unlatches on this way so you pull it out pry it toward the driver's side and pull it the rest of the way out take the glove box out take the screws out around the glove box that should slide it out let you know in a second screws and the glove box slides out so let me go ahead and pull the glove box out of the way need to keep the door open to get it out. 
or the kids. Oh boy. Piece forward, you have easy access to a screw there. Screw under here. Loose from the driver's side. Did it with a bone tool. And we need to disconnect the fog light switch from this. Disconnect these, this switch here from that trim. Just unplug it. Next, you need to take that dimmer loose, dash light dimmer. You put a screwdriver in one of those slots and you can work it unloose that way. Then you want to take this uh, switch, the headlight switch loose from this dash. Get loose, you just pull it through. Then the headlight switch, you can just unplug the electrical connector from it. Next, we're going to take the two screws out of the top of the steering column. Take that trim off. The screws out, lift it up a little bit, pull it towards you, and it will come loose from the dash. The ignition switch trim off. The bottom is loose. Try to figure out, pop this top loose without breaking it. Let me look real careful till we tell you how we got this thing loose. Maybe pry this plastic just a little bit right there. We pried this little piece, the top of this up just a little bit to get this to unlatch, but the two bottom ones are already busted. Lower trim from around the steering column. You got a T25 there, and you got a T25 on the other side. Take those two screws out. The two screws on the front side. Get the screws loose on the bottom side, and it should come out. Pull seven screws out of the dash. Number one, way over there. Number two, right there. Number three, right here. Number four, and there. Number five, right here, under the glove box. Number six, right here under the glove box. And number seven, over here on the side of the dash. These are all T30s. This fourth one here is a Phillips that is way down in there. So you need a narrow tip Phillips to get in there and unscrew that screw. Now that all seven of those screws are loose, you need to release the vent for the defrost. You pull those little rubber tabs and push them to the outer side. So unlatch them like that so that when you pull the dash out it doesn't catch on those let me see if there's one on this side yep there's one on this side too this stuff is real brittle the next step you pull the dash forward making sure you clear those and maneuver it past your lock cylinder lift it up over your steering wheel Unplug the wire from the glove box door down in the dash and you unplug it at that green wire plug there. Don't pull it loose up here like I did because the whole thing comes apart in your hand. We pulled the ashtray out, pulled the tab out, got the ashtray out of the way. Next, we're going to remove this knob here. It just pulls off. T25, take that screw out. Take this screw out. Then we're going to release these with a flat tip screwdriver. And we're going to take this screw out up here too. That actually looks more like a T20 than a T25. On both sides so that we can pull this a little bit toward the back. I'm going to put a small tip screwdriver or something in there. Pry this off. Now you want to release the nut on the AC switch. You can use needle nose pliers to unlock that, get it loose. If for some reason you don't have needle nose pliers, you could put this in there, pry it, and get that nut turning. It's not in there that tight. Spin that nut off. Now pull this out a little bit so you can reach in here behind it and start unplugging things. Make sure you keep track of where things have to get plugged back in it or you'll have a mess on your hands. So get it leaned forward. Make sure you know where your light bulbs go. Like this light bulb here goes in that socket there. Unplug everything so you can pull this trim out of the way. 
the you're key. gonna put your foot on the brake or, you, or set your parking brake turn the key pull the car and drive okay pull this in and out of the way you need a little bit of slack to get all that stuff out of there now that you got everything unplugged you could actually test your light bulbs while you got this loose but you want to mark everything so you remember where stuff goes back in there with the front panel off you should be able to slide this down and out man look what happens when you don't have a cabin air filter either that or some critter made a bed in here this stuff needs to be vacuumed up but these just slide out in a way move them on both sides wow keep panel loose 10 millimeter there 10 millimeter there a couple of t30s there and this t30 here what i'm gonna do is get a t30 take this screw loose get all these grounds here we're going to zip tie these grounds together so that we don't lose none of them and forget to put one back now take this bracket loose here it's got two screws here take these two screws loose they look like t30s after that screw's removed remove that one there and the two down at the bottom they're all t30s Make sure you take a picture of your wires that are above and then pictures of the wires that's below so you don't get those mixed up I unplug the connector to the fan the light socket came out there the light socket fell out there next I'm gonna come over here and disconnect the cable loosen the cable that uh, goes to the heater control here you can see that moving up and down looks like it just unclips over there and then I'll unlatch it unlatch it here loose I move this over here you probably use a flat tip screwdriver pry that toward the passenger side it'll pop that loose let that cable out of that bracket and then unlatch it from the control this loose make sure you have your hand on the back side of it I pop that thing loose it flew halfway across the street now with that loose I should be able to unlatch my cable from the linkage do is pull this knob off so that we can undo this switch we need to get this loose so that the back of this panel can slide back into the dash area and leave that there and pull the rest of this framework toward us out of the way we're going to pull these four screws and see if that releases this inner part of this panel. I'm gonna pull the gear shifter back again so we can get this up and out of the way. And you have one more T30 down here. Next, we unclip this relay from that little metal clip there. All right, here, you reach down there, there's a 12 millimeter nut there. And then on the other side, there's a 12 there, down under the carpet here. Once you get those two 12s out, you can remove this support and that support out of the way. Got a relay clip to the bracket here. Unclip that relay. And I should be able to get this out of here, out of the way. working on the other side panel down you pry on these tabs on either side just a little bit and you can get this unlatched from this front panel get this front panel totally out of the way next we're going to pull the floor ducts loose take this screw out here hit the one on the other side and try to maneuver the ducts off from against the floor and down so that this will be loose the upper duct system will be loose from the lower floor vent. I'm going to tuck the radio wires back behind there out of the way and I'm going to pull this front facing vent ducts off. Um, 
Next, I'm going to disconnect this vacuum from here. Disconnect this vacuum from here. And try to maneuver this passenger side ductwork out of the way. It's not connected to its little mount thing there. It's possible, but somebody's got some kind of staples in this thing. It looks like this thing may have been out before. Not sure if that's OEM or not. The passenger side duct should have had one screw in it here. I don't know if it had it in there or not. Next, we're going to look for that screw on the driver's side down here. There should be a screw in the duct system that's holding the duct in there. Hold on a second. Let me find the screw. Driver's side air duct. You got to pull this screw out here. Come in this side, and the screw's up here. Phillips actually it's a T25 Pull that screw out then you should be able to get that top air duct system out from the top of the dash We're getting pretty okay. close to the point of where we can take we got the vent out So Next thing I think we need to do is separate This unit by pulling all of these clips with a flat tip screwdriver So pull as many of those as you can find These clips off of here flat tip screwdriver make sure you don't lose them there's four across the front one on the back clips off I maneuvered it moved this wire harness aside I pivoted it out toward the floor got it out of the way and there you see the fan blades and the clip that keeps that fan uh, blade installed. It's got a scratch on it. I wonder if somebody's pulled this once before. The fan actually feels pretty tight in this thing. A little rust on it. So you gotta pry this clip here up and slide it forward or back so that that center pin comes out of one of these holes and then you can pull that blade off. He's going to be working on the other side, getting all of those clips off of there so he can get that side out. Might have been blown into I the put closet. a real tiny tip screwdriver under that clip mm -hmm. and put a bigger flat screwdriver under the end of it. Slid that clip a little bit to one side and it came right off. And then I slid the blade out. Looks like the shaft has a key. And let me see if the blade hole has a key. I guess it's got a little bit of a flat spot there. Fan blade retainer off. Got the blade off. Now you see the motor there. Take the inner air duct system loose. You got this heater control valve thing just stuck in there. Bend that out of your way. Take these three T25s loose and undo this flap controller there. Right now it's set not to let any air go to the floor. You don't want to mess that up. And it probably has a, uh, see that controller there? You need to take that vent loose, that uh, air hose loose from that. You don't want to get that out of whack or break it. Got the big wire and harness here. You got your fan plug switch here. The red wire <laughs> that's attached to this blue one coming out of here. This red blue wire, the other side of it is the plug for the fan. Now that stuff comes out of the bottom of the fan housing there. We can't see where that ground is going. So we're going to cut the ground and run the wires through there and we're going to ground the fan with these wires here which may be where it's grounded anyway so we're going to unplug these wire cut that ground then we're going to take the fan loose and pull it out duct system off you can easily get the three screws out of the motor then we poke the wire into the bottom of the air duct uh, assembly and we can pull the wire out since we disconnected it and cut the ground. 
Not totally sure where that ground goes, but we're going to reground it up here with all the ground wire stuff that we have here. Now that the fan is out, there's your resistor. The OEM Volvo resistor. The wires are soldered to it, and you have a grommet that seals off air leaks from the air box, and then you have the plug that plugs into the switch. Now, all of the wires are in place, it looks like, except for two. This red and white wire and this white and black wire. So we want to remove these two wires from the old resistor and, and plug. And then pull the resistor down behind here through this plug hole and out of the driver's side. And then we want to feed this stuff back up through the box and out right here. So the next thing we're going to do is try to release these two wires from this connector and pull these out. Alright, so getting the wire loose, you can see on that little thing it has a catch. So you take a large paper clip, you slide it down in the connector. You push it till it stops, wiggle it, try to see if you get your wire loose. So you can almost see it through that clear spot there. Let me use two hands to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and work this plug up here to there and knock that plug through there and push that out and work on getting the replacement one up through here. The plug doesn't fit through the hole. So what we're going to do is unpin all the wires and run the wires through there and not the plug. So you got to make sure you put all the wires back in the right way. On the one that you're taking out, you can just cut the wires. You don't want that resistor no more anyway. On the other ones that you're running in, uh, you definitely want to unpin those. So we're unpinning these. We're going to mark which wire goes to which one so we can unpin the new connector and run the wires through the hole. In the large paper clip, when I run the paper clip down there to the pin, I could actually feel it click and then I could pull the wire out. Right. Taking the plug apart, we got red, white, brown, blank, and black. I have the resistor wires coming through the top. I ran them under everything over to the plug plugged all the wires in the plug. I put that drain tube thing on the wires on the motor. The OEM motor, the wires come straight down from the bottom and over to that uh, drain or wire access. This, it didn't. So I just um, pushed the wires through that and I'm going to use that as a grommet to block that hole off so i'm gonna work that down in there i got the power lead here i'm gonna plug into the wire on the switch in a minute and i'm gonna ground this with those other ground wires over there and i did screw the motor in and the flat side of the frame of the motor goes towards the front of the car and the three screws went right in and the top screw went through the uh, bracket of the resistor this is how my fan wires look. Going down through there, pull a little bit of the slack out that helps it, and I got it set in the bottom of the grommet. Now we're gonna put the side of the duct in place and then hook the fan blades on both sides. Three screws that hold it, one there, one there, one up there. The top one, the actual receiver for the screw fell out into the duct system so I fished it out with a magnet and I need to get it back up in there and put it back in place so when I put the screw in the screw actually screws it in so watch out for that now that the inner duct casing is in time to put the blade on the motor so it has a key it'll go on so far and then turn it until it keys on. Then you'll be able to put the clip on.
All right, it's all far enough for the clip. So this clip goes on a certain way, slides in place. Let me use two hands to get that clip in place. Actually, I could just push it in now with a screwdriver or with my hand. But push that tip with the screwdriver. Fan hooked up on both sides, you wanna spin it. Make sure it doesn't rub. If you want, you could jump it with your jump box again. Watch it spin and blow air out. But I got the fan hooked up on both sides and it doesn't appear to be rubbing. We plugged in the switch control because we want to make sure this fan works. We plugged in the power to the fan. We hooked up a ground in this bracket temporarily. Hooked up the battery. He's going to turn the key to the accessory position and this fan should kick on. It should start blowing when he turns the key to the first notch. Oh, my wipers work. Oh, yep. The fan on. The fan actually has an off switch. So it's getting all four positions. Just one. Runs low. Two. Three. Four. Sounds very good. This actually has an off position. Good to go. Now we can finish assembly. Put our air ducting system on. Make sure that that inner flap thing in there, the hole, pokes through this hole here before you start putting these clips on around there. Make sure it's in the channel the whole way around and evenly space these securing clips on it. Here, and I got the clips in it. I put the top duct in. I hooked the vacuum there. I ran this vacuum around the hair and I put this rubber nipple in here to hold this up. And it had a little hard time doing it. So I put needle nose pliers on it and I slowly lifted it with a twist until it came up and locked that in place. So over on this side, you gotta make sure you get that actuator nipple thing through there we got the clips in it now we're going to screw the top duct in there's a screw that's supposed to go there that was actually missing we're going to put a screw in there put that screw in the other side of the top duct and then we're going to hook up the floor ducts man that thing did not want to come in focus when you put this driver side air duct casing in make sure you get that heater control valve sensor in there so that uh you don't have to take it back apart get it back together when you go to re maneuver and set the upper dash pad back in place be careful with these upper vents make sure they are channeled properly into the upper dash uh, pad uh, vent slots if not, you're probably going to break them. So be careful with that. That stuff is very old, very brittle, very fragile. Sad to say, my battery died on my phone, so I wasn't able to finish recording everything. But uh, just put your lower stuff back together, then put your upper stuff back together, and you may want to just back out of the... Uh, instructions that I had or look at the tutorial that's linked in the comment section. If you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter and if you need to contact me directly please visit my website. And if you have any questions leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.